Time Warner Cable is pleased to be an underwriting sponsor for Carolina Week. Coming up on the April 21st edition of Carolina Week, we'll tell you about the emergency on campus drill that developed into much more than that. I'm Karine DeShield, an additional 1,200 university faculty and staff members to be out of work next year. Coming up, what these budget cuts mean for you and your education. In sports, some former Tar Heel football players are anxiously awaiting the weekend. Plus, several teams have opportunities for ACC championship crowns. Weathercaster John Boyer can, will tell us if we can expect these spring showers to make way for a sunny weekend. All that and some fabulous fancy footwork. Carolina Week starts right now. From the James F. Goodman Studio in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, connecting campus and community, this is Carolina Week. Someone thrusts a gun in the back of a student journalist and orders him to the ground. Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Lamb. And I'm Andrea Blanford. It happened during a safety drill this morning, and the student says the man with the gun identified himself as a Chapel Hill tactical officer. The student is Will Gorham, managing editor of our radio counterpart, Carolina Connection. Gorham is live in our satellite studio. Will, you were trying to cover an emergency drill near campus, coordinated by the Department of Public Safety, correct? That's right. Uh, I was gathering sound for Carolina Connection, trying to get sound of the uh, activity. All right. Well, let's get right to the audio recording you made of the confrontation. This exercise seems totally confined to this, to this property. It's not, the shooter's not uh, moving up to campus or anything. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, media, media, media. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Are you supposed to be in this area? I'm. Are you supposed to be in this area? I'm just on the, I'm just on the outskirts of the road, sir. I'm not, I didn't. Are you supposed to be in this area? I didn't know that I was not supposed to be in this area. Turn it off, please. Yeah. Well, what happened after you turned off your recorder? Well, uh, the officer told me that, well, he first he radioed to the mobile command center, which was in the outdoor education center, and he talked to, he, he told them that he had encountered me. Uh, I didn't hear their answer, but he said that I needed to go to the uh, UNC Department of Public Safety and talk to them about the audio that I had and whether or not I could use it. They would determine whether or not I could use it. Well, at the time of the incident, did you think the gun was real or that the person with the gun was indeed a police officer? I, at the time, yes, the gun is, was very real. It's, it was a large rifle with a scope. Uh, the officer was in full camouflage. The gun was, was camouflage. I thought it was very, it looked very real. Uh, and I, and I, I believed he was a police officer, yes. All right. Well, thanks, Will. We'll come back to you in just a moment. But prior to the exercise, the university posted an informational video to YouTube. The person you're about to hear speaking is the Director of Public Safety, Jeff McCracken. Campus. Actors will portray armed gunmen, hostages, and victims. We don't expect the exercise to affect you, other than maybe noticing some emergency vehicles traveling to the site but it will provide all of us with a great opportunity to practice emergency preparedness. So the focus of the exercise was to practice using actors what law enforcement and other campus officials should do in the case of a real emergency, such as a gunman on campus. The exercise was restricted to the Outdoor Education Center off Country Club Road. You see it here, bordered in red. The main campus is bordered in blue right next to it. The area in red was blocked off to everyone except those who had a direct role in the exercise. Earlier today, one of our reporters went back to the neighborhood with Will Gorham to let him point out exactly where he was in relation to the closed area. Gordon says he was standing on a curb in a residential neighborhood. It backs up to the woods that you see. The restricted area is on the other side. Gordon says he was standing on the curb with a microphone pointed toward the woods when someone stuck something in the small of his back and forced him to get on the ground. Only then, according to Gorham, did the man identify himself as a member of law enforcement. Here you can see the conclusion of the exercise on the far side of the wooded area. 
This afternoon, campus officials held a press conference to discuss the results of the exercise. The discussion, of course, quickly turned to the confrontation between the person claiming to be a Chapel Hill tactical officer and student journalist Will Gorham. So the response, I think, was appropriate. The officer involved had no idea uh, who the person was and felt, at least initially, that they must be part of the exercise. And it's a two-way activity. We can put stuff on Twitter and put it on Facebook and put it on the email and put it on the website, but if, we, if, if people aren't reading it and taking it seriously, then that's only going to get us so far. All right, let's go back now to Will Gorham in our satellite studio. Will, any response to Chief McCracken and the Chancellor? Well, I think they're speaking as if I was in a restricted area, but I want to make clear that I was outside of the Outdoor Education Center. I was on a residential road. Um, as you said, there were houses on one side. The Global Education Center was on the other. There was a tree line separating the road from the Outdoor Education Center. And I was not beyond that tree line. I was standing on the side of a residential road. Okay. Well, what do you think happened? Did the officer think you were part of the exercise? I, I think he, he did think that. A after he asked who I was and I identified myself and he talked to the mobile command center, uh, he said, I'm sorry, I thought you were a bad guy. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, he, he did think I was part of the exercise. But like I said, I didn't, I, I didn't think I was in a restricted area. I wasn't. All right. Well, thank you so much, Will, for stopping by. I know it's been a tough day for you, and we appreciate you sharing your story with us. That's Will Gorham, live in our satellite studio. So to summarize, for you at home, especially if you're just now joining us, student journalist Will Gorham, managing editor of the campus radio newscast Carolina Connection, says while he was trying to cover an off-campus emergency preparedness drill, a man identifying himself as a Chapel Hill tactical officer put a rifle in Gorham's back, forced him to the ground, and later demanded that he turn over his audio tape to the Department of Public Safety. The director of DPS said at a press conference late this afternoon that he hadn't yet spoken to the officer and was unsure exactly where the incident took place, but that he does think the reporter entered the perimeter of the restricted area. Last year, former Representative Tom Tancredo's visit to campus erupted in a national controversy. On Monday, he's coming back to, spit to finish his speech. A group of student activists protested when the organization Youth for Western Civilization invited former Representative Tancredo to campus. Tancredo was slated to speak about illegal immigration but left without finishing his speech. Police held back protesters with Mason Force and arrested senior Haley Koch after the incident. Koch was acquitted of charges in September. Today, activists gathered in the pit to protest Tancredo's return to campus. Youth for Western Civilization will host Tancredo in the union on Monday. Haley Koch, who spoke at today's protest, says it isn't a matter of free speech. The debates around free speech and the discourses are really a distraction from what's really going on here. They're a distraction from the real is issues, which is that right-wing hatred is on the rise. Protesters will be present when Tancredo speaks on Monday, but they aren't revealing their plan of action. If you're sticking around Chapel Hill for the summer, you'll get to see some changes to one of the area's most popular shopping spots. Construction workers broke ground yesterday at University Mall. Chapel Hill officials and University Mall representatives announced construction of a new entrance to attract more visitors. The entrance renovations include an outside patio and a garden. A new road to University Mall will ease traffic flow into the shopping center. To celebrate, University Mall staff and town officials planted a tree near the site of the future entrance. Well, it looks like another round of cuts is on the way for the university system based on Governor Bev Perdue's proposed state budget. Reporter Perrine DeShield is live in the studio with a breakdown of what this means for UNC's future. Perrine, what's the scoop? Elizabeth, Governor Perdue has a lot on her plate, but some are worried that her attempts to balance the budget might send UNC backwards. Money, power, and respect are a few things on the mind of Governor Bev Perdue right now. Tuesday, she announced her proposed budget spending for the upcoming year, including finances within the UNC system. Though she supports funding for enrollment growth and plans to increase financial aid for about 4,600 need-based students, Purdue also proposed budget cuts for the UNC system. The budget cuts about a, bill, a billion dollars and about 600 jobs, positions. UNC President Erskine Bowles said Purdue's budget cuts would mean an increase in class size, decreased course offerings, a reduction of student support programs, and the elimination of faculty positions. 
ultimately lowering academic and financial integrity. But when it comes to preserving UNC's reputation, Director of Scholarship and Aid, Shirley Ort, stress quality over quantity. It's not just about price because price doesn't guarantee that you're getting the best value. It's when you juxtapose price with the quality of the education. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be really mindful on both ends of that continuum. You know, we don't want to be a bargain basement university. Student government treasurer Dakota Williams said students in classrooms should remain a focal point. I like having a lot of faculty, but at the same time, I think that ultimately, um, the mission of the university is to educate a lot of people. And even if you know if it's a difference between 30 and 50 people in a class, I think that, that people are still getting educated. And the main concern is with the possibility of fewer and bigger classes, educational quality could suffer. So, Preen, what's the main effect of Governor Purdue's proposed budget cuts on the UNC system? Elizabeth, the budget cuts might mean eliminating nearly 1,200 additional faculty positions across 17 campuses. That's Preen DeShield, live in our studio. Thanks, Preen. Well, thousands of HIV patients need financial help to pay for medications. That's right. Coming up, we'll show you how the state funding crisis might keep this man from treating his HIV. Hey, Sarah. Oh, my gosh, this is so cute. How do you know, Cal? Come on, Donovan, do it like I taught you. Love the new tattoo, Sarah. Let's go! Dude, what? Dude, that's Sarah. Sarah. The girl in the pink shirt, that's the girl I was telling you about. Oh, that's Sarah? Theater 2 on your left. Hey, Sarah. What color underwear today? Hey, Sarah, so when you want to post something new? Anything you post online, anyone can see. Family, friends. See you later, Sarah. Even not so friendly people. Think before you post. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What'd you dream about? Something I did. Are you on your way to the mall? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Last year, almost 1,800 North Carolinians developed HIV, and many have trouble paying for the costly treatments they need. Health reporter Carrie Gann tells us how the state's budget crisis is affecting HIV patients in need. Durham resident Travis Stevens takes 16 pills every day to treat his HIV. He has a job, but still needs help paying for his medications. My AIDS medication, the tripler, it costs 33000 dollars a year. Stevens has applied for the AIDS Drug Assistance Program, called ADAP, a state fund that helps low-income residents pay for their HIV medications. Stevens has yet to get approved. In January, North Carolina began putting people on a wait list for ADAP. This week, that list has 415 people who are waiting for HIV medication. These medicines are a crucial part of saving individual lives, but also essential to stopping the spread of HIV very scary to know that you cannot um, get your medications from the ADAP program anymore. Dr. Peter Leone directs the state's efforts to halt the spread of HIV. He says medications also reduce a patient's risk of spreading HIV. The treatment for HIV is expensive, um, but they work. We've made this progress. It really would be a horrible public health mistake and, and a real disaster for the population's impact that if we can't continue to provide meds. Wanda Brindle Moss got word ADAP will stop paying for some of her medicines. It was um, a shock. She says cutting funding for HIV treatment could be disastrous. Without the funding for the ADAP, 
we will be taking leaps and bounds backwards to where people were dying all the time of HIV and AIDS. Without proper funding for ADAP, many North Carolinians with HIV will have to wait for the life-saving help they need. In Chapel Hill, I'm Carrie Gann, Carolina Week. This week, the governor proposed $14 million for next year's budget to reopen ADAP. Next week, we'll hear more about how people with HIV are coping with the disease. Don't care for flip-flop footwear? New research might change your mind. Experts once thought flat and flexible flip-flops were harmful to your foot and bone health, but new research provides different insight. A study conducted at Rush University in Chicago concluded that flip-flops reduced the stress on knee joints by 15% compared to wearing more stable shoes like sneakers. You know, Andrea, I'm sure we're all really looking forward to wearing flip-flops. I wonder when that's going to happen. I know. I'm not wearing my flip-flops yet, but yeah. weathercaster John Boyer is here to tell us when that sunshine is going to come out. Well, certainly as you head out later this evening, you know, you can get a chance to wear the flip-flops tomorrow as well. But unfortunately, if you're looking at a nice weekend in store, I don't know if I have good news for you. We'll talk about the forecast coming up next. Antes de tratar. Solo tú. No juegues con fósforos, no juegues con fuego. Fuego. No hay nada para tu pobre conejo asustado. A un pobre ratón sin casa en que vivir. Si un hermoso bosque es lo que deseas, no juegues con fósforos, no juegues con fuego. Solo tú puedes prevenir los fuegos forestales. Fuego. Everything about buying a bigger place? Just waiting for a visit from the credit fairy. There is no credit fairy. How else will I get a better credit score? Look, you keep your credit card balances low and only open a new card if you really need it. No fairy? There's no magic to improving your credit, but there's help, and it's free. Go to creditfairy.org. Welcome back to Carolina Week. I'm John Boyer. We just got done with all the rain activity for today, so you can look forward to a nice evening and a nice uh, uh, day tomorrow. But there's rain in sight for the weekend. At least our temperatures will be okay. It really is spring now. But here's the radar picture. Now, we're here in Chapel Hill right here. I'm sorry the counties didn't turn out better. But uh, during the 4 o'clock hour, this is what was bringing us that heavy rain into Chapel Hill and Durham vicinity. It's moved east to Raleigh now, and it'll continue pushing out all the way to the coast overnight. And you see behind it just a few scattered sprinkles. So um, you might want to keep the umbrella handy, but certainly no downpours. Out on the satellite picture, there's a heavy cloud cover in the eastern half of the state out over the uh, coast as well, and uh, more broken cloud covers. You head back toward the mountains and uh, a lot of clear skies here in the central part of the country near the Tennessee River Valley. That's what we have in store for tomorrow. But for now, those are our rain showers. We're saying goodbye to them for tonight. If you're heading out to the baseball game, we're looking at uh, Davidson, 6 o'clock tonight out at the Bosch. Around 60 degrees, mostly sunny, but the seats will be wet. And of course, one or two showers could still be a possibility. Meanwhile, the rest of your evening is looking a little cool, especially as we head towards sunup with 46 degrees calm winds. Tomorrow, about 15 degrees warmer than today, 76 for your high, and uh, clouds at times, mostly clear during the lunchtime hour, but clouding up as we head into the evening, winds 4 to 8 miles an hour. Now, the surface map for tomorrow shows us clear skies. That system we have for today is moving well offshore. Here's our next weather maker for the weekend. You know, we're not done with the rain just quite yet, and so uh, bringing rain to Kansas and Oklahoma, that'll spread in during the day on Friday. Meanwhile, today, you know, pollen wasn't too bad because the rain was able to knock it down to a moderate level. This is 4 out of 12, but tomorrow, uh, sunny skies, uh, pollen will start building up again. But we are sort of toward the end of the tree pollen season, so things are uh, looking better for those of you who suffer, as I do. From the pollen weather forecast, partly cloudy but increasing tomorrow, uh, turning into a mostly cloudy day for Friday with some late sprinkles. Now on Saturday, that's going to be our best chance of some rain as well as Sunday. Could be some thunderstorms as our temperatures do warm up. And then once again on Monday, it looks like that system will have a hard time clearing out lingering showers during the morning. Your temperature trend as well, staying very close to the seasonal average, mostly into the mid to upper 70s, our warmest day there being Sunday. Nighttime lows, the only really cool one we have to worry about is this upcoming uh, evening, uh, 45 and then 49 for Friday morning and then becoming warm once again as we head into the start of the next work week. So I'll go back to the seven day because I know you folks like that. It's actually five days. Well, I hope I didn't confuse you too much with that forecast, but there is some rain. We're not done with it yet. All right. Thanks, John.
Well, if you're looking for a new furry friend, look no further. This pup's for you. Meet Sammy. Just look at this face. Sammy is a two-month-old German Shepherd Rottweiler mix who needs a new home. This precious pup just loves people and would make the perfect pet. Sammy's not just cute and playful, but sweet too, and she's sure to work her way into your heart. She's spayed, up to date on shots, and she's ready to go to her forever home today. To adopt Sammy, check out our website at carolinaweek.org for a link to the shelter. You know, the semester is coming to a close, but I don't think sports is. No, it's definitely not. Sportscaster Justin Page is here to tell us more. No, that's right. Uh, ACC Championship is actually right around the corner for several teams. But coming up after the break, the softball team struggled during the weekend against Maryland. Could the Hills turn around on Tuesday evening? of a car crash, three out of four kids are not as secure as they should be because their car seats are not used correctly. But the latch system makes it easier to get it right and to hold your kids tight. Anchor, tether, latch. Learn more at safercar.gov. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We're gonna beat them and bust them. Beat them. The bust smallest them. moments can have the biggest beat impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad One more today. Time. All those boys are much too much. Those boys. So, April, yeah. you know your charger's still using energy when it's. Welcome to Carolina Week Sports, I'm Justin Page. Senior All-American Danielle Spaulding took the mound Tuesday for the softball team as App State tried to get its very first win against the Heels. The senior brought her bounce with her early on and was absolutely hot. Watch this pitch right there. They are not catching up to that one. And Spaulding did more than just pitch. Here she is in the bottom of the first, watch this. Release the Kraken. She cranks that home run over the fence and you can add that to her four hitless innings on the mound. Plenty of reasons for the Hills to dance it up early. Fast forward to the sixth, Amber Johnson in a bind with runners on second and third when App State's Allie Cashin hits this blooper past shortstop Christine Knauer, bringing in two runs. But it was too little too late for the Mountaineers though as Johnson gets this strikeout to end the game. The Hills get the win six to two. Head coach Donna Papa says the team lacked enthusiasm at the end. Um, I think we started to coast a little once we got a couple of runs and we, we let off the pedal, so to speak, and we want them on the pedal the whole time and we want them in the moment the whole time because that's how it's got to be every single pitch, every single inning. The Hills close out ACC play this weekend in a series at Virginia Tech. This weekend could change the lives of some former UNC athletes. The three-day extravaganza that is the NFL draft starts on Thursday, and several former Tar Heels are hoping to hear their names called. They've put in the preparation, run the drills, and interviewed with teams. Now it's time to see how, the, how much the scouts liked what they saw. There are a lot of linemen up on the board. At the top is Cam Thomas, a monster run stuffer. The 330-pound tackle is projected to go in the second or third round. E.J. Wilson is a strong and aggressive pass rusher. He's projected to go in later rounds. 295-pound defensive tackle Alaric Mullins runs a 4.9540, but experts say he needs to develop his technique to be effective at the next level. And finally is offensive tackle Kyle Jolly. Experts say if he's drafted, he'll probably go in the seventh round. The NCAA track and field championships are just around the corner, and Alicia Moore says one UNC sprinter is trying to break into the record books one last time. For UNC track and field athletes, the season is coming to a close, and for some, a career. Senior Venetia Ivey says wearing Carolina blue has been special. The pride that you have wearing the Carolina blue and the history that's behind it, it's bigger than just me. Ivy is just one of the heels looking to have a big performance in the coming weeks to have a shot at nationals. But in order for the two-time All-American to return to nationals, she knows that focus is key, even when she's just practicing. So when I'm warming up uh, and about to get into blocks, I'm kind of relaxing myself. So I'm thinking, let's go V, you got it. And then I'm thinking, okay, 
but don't um, don't get too hyped. Calm down, take a deep breath. You've practiced this a hundred times. You know what to do. Your body knows what to do, so just do it. Sprint coach Antonio Pettigrew says one simple thing has been the key to her success over the years. Well, I just think the biggest thing is confidence. Here at the Eddie Smith Fieldhouse, Ivy already broke UNC's indoor 60-meter hurdle record. Now she has her sights set on the outdoor 100-meter record, and she says nothing will stop her, not even her height. I know I'm five. <clears throat> whatever, you know, but uh, other hurdlers, you know, five, five, at least they're taller, but it doesn't really matter to me. I just go out there and compete. Coach Pettigrew says even though Ivy is only 5'2", height has never and will never determine the performance of an athlete. Regardless how short and tall are you, if you want, if you're a competitor, you're a competitor. There's really no debating. Ivy is a competitor. In Chapel Hill, I'm Alistia Moore, Carolina Week. Ivy has opportunities to qualify for nationals this weekend at the pin relays and twice here at the Carolina qualifiers in May. The baseball team struggles have been well documented, but tonight the Heels look to start a win streak. The Davidson Wildcats come to town tonight to take on the Diamond Heels. Now UNC has never lost to Davidson in the Mike Fox era, so maybe tonight's the night the Tar Heels snap their, their uh, season high four game losing streak and really get it going. So we wish them the best of luck and obviously a great week in sports. We sure do. Thanks, Justin. Well, if you think River Dance is amazing, you ain't seen nothing yet. Coming up, this local group just might give them a run for their money. If you have a story idea, call Carolina Week at 919-843-8292 or email us at carolinaweek at unc.edu. If you have questions about this program, write Carolina Week at Campus Box 3365 UNCCH Chapel Hill, North Carolina 27599. Be sure to check out Carolina Week and Carolina Connection online at carolinaweek.org. I'm starving. What's for breakfast? Guten Tag! Johannes Rose! I bring you arts enriched raisin brands, fortified with increased test scores and creative problem solving skills. It's Good. And good for you. Bobby? Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the arts! <laughs> <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Well, we're all familiar with the shows So You Think You Can Dance and America's Got Talent. Bethany Tuggle has some insight about a local group that could tap its way to the top spot on either program. It's music to the ears. <laughs> And to work out for the feet. Members of the North Carolina Youth Tap Ensemble, or Insight, have tapped into something special. They have rhythm. They have stamina. And to top it all off, some serious skills. UNC graduate Jean Medler started the group more than 25 years ago and says back then the success they've achieved was little more than a pipe dream. When we started it was very naive and it was like a, a bad garage band that just kept practicing and practicing and we got better. Now the group has grown to nearly 40 dancers who all have to audition for a spot in the ensemble. As the dancers get older and more experienced, they start teaching the younger dancers what they know. Blair Jones has been with the group since she was five and says this part helps her grow as a dancer and show others the art of tap at the same time. It just helps you like learn a lot about yourself while you're like helping other dancers learn too. Medler says he's not only a teacher but also a coach. I kind of see it as the same thing. You know, a good athlete and a good dancer, there's three elements that create them and it's genetics, desire, and training. If you go to see the group show off some fancy footwork, just remember tapping and clapping go pretty well together. A bigger crowd and like a crowd that's really enthusiastic just helps us like be more excited about dancing and like just makes us really happy. So I guess you can say there are areas version of Happy Feet. In Chapel Hill, I'm Bethany Tuggle, Carolina Week. It looks like they're putting a lot of hard effort, hard sure work into does. that. It sure does. It sure does. Well, they're actually performing this Saturday at 7.30 and Sunday at 2 at the Carolina Theater in Durham. That's right. Well, that does it for this edition of Carolina Week. Thanks for watching. Good night.